messenger RNA goes out, ribosomes put them together in a string, and then the side groups hang off. So they're able to fold back around what's called the tertiary structure, three, the third dimension. So this is where a hydrogen bond can happen here. So see here, you got an alcohol group hanging off. And the alcohol runs into the tail end of a carboxylic acid there. And you've got a bond between the strings, between the backbones. Over here you've got what's called a hydrophobic interaction in van der Waals. All that is is these hydrocarbons coming together because the water around them would be pushing them together. So that's two types of bonds. Here's the disulfide. This is used in your hair gals that get perms, something about breaking the disulfide bonds, right? Well, there's that sulfur hanging off. There's only two amino acids with the sulfurs. This is the terminal one, the one hanging off the back there, right? The other one was in the middle, so that couldn't do this kind of sulfide bond. And here's an ionic bond. See, there's a terminus, the ending nitrogen with that plus charge, and then there's a carboxylic acid hanging off. So that's a, a full-blown ionic bond because that oxygen there is not protonated. It's got an electron pair out there, and it bonds the proton. It's kind of like a hydrogen bond, but it's, it's borderline. Being in the middle of a protein like this, uh, oh boy, that's a tough call calling that an ionic bond. So in the middle of a protein, this is the, what, what is going on. This is how things are put together. It's how they're held together. And then what will happen is there will be a metal in the middle somewhere. That will be the catalyst or give it the... Uh, Okay, the four structures, see the primary structure is what the, just naming the amino acids are. Okay, so here's like glycine, proline, threonine, glycine, threonine, glycine, gl oh, they're all going in here. So that's called the primary structure. It's pretty much the naming of the order of these things. The secondary structure that this is able to do is come along and it'll either form an alpha helices, See the way this will go around in a circle, kind of like DNA gets called an alpha helix. It's called the secondary structure. So if it's not going in a circular thing like the alpha helix, it's in a beta sheet, they call it. Beta pleated sheet. So that's how these... This is why when I'm drawing the triangles, I'm drawing them up, up and down and up and down. Because these things are coming around here, this R subgroup is down, the next R subgroup is down, this subgroup is up. So not only are they alternating up and down, but they're, they're pointing different too. All those, every other one is on the opposite side. So these going down, and this is called the beta sheet. So beta is shown in a lot of different places. This Greek letter for B, so A and B. So this is called the two types of secondary structure that amino acids just happen to do. The tertiary structure, this is where it gets complicated, folks. This is where there's proof that there's a God because the enzymes come out in their primary structure, they come out, they're made in the, the ribosomes, make them, they come out, then they form these alpha helixes in the beta sheets. But then the, f the way that they fold in this tertiary structure, it's, we can't predict it. We're trying to find, this is where the limits of our in intellect are now in the 21st century is being able to get the tertiary structure because we can code proteins, we can make DNAs coding in a bacteria to make the string. We know how it'll alpha and beta helix itself, beta sheet, alpha helix itself. 
but the tertiary structure, it has to fold in a certain way. You can't start at the end or start in the middle. It's got to be a certain way, and it's just this is where you can't even predict it. It's beyond – it's elegant. I mean, it's just – because inside, again, like I said, is where a metal will be. This is the active site of an enzyme. This is what proteins are doing here. The amino acids are making proteins that make enzymes. And the enzymes are what are so unique and cool. And oh gosh, I was reading about vitamin C. And uh, Linus Pauling was saying, you know, we used to have the capability to make vitamin C. Well, we have three of the four components of the enzyme to make it. So we're kind of close, but one, what does it say? We don't. See, the problem now, this is why you got to learn your DNA. The DNA, I'm finding, is the same. It's learning which proteins to turn off and turn on. I even read somewhere that birds have genes, the DNA, for teeth. It's just the enzymes that make the teeth aren't working. I don't know if they're there or not, but they're not turned on. So the genes are there. It's just a matter of picking which ones get turned on. That's the key now. So who knows what genes are in humans that are in mice. It, but we have a hierarchy telling us which enzymes are going to turn on which genes. So this is where the limits of our capability are. We can't even come close to making the proteins form the tertiary structure like we'd like them to make an active site. Oh, we're not even close. And then they'll, they'll go on and call this the quaternary structure. This would be like the overall size of this enzyme. So those are the four structures, as they call it. So this is where I'm at. I like the chemistry of the secondary structure here. You know, you can code for the first, you know, pick, pick the amino acid side groups, whatever you want. But now it's, are they forming alpha helices or the beta sheets? This is the chemistry I'm into. Because those go on to form these. And this is what holds it together. Some enzymes, are, it's called denaturing. If you think of the egg white, when you break an egg open and you fry it, once you fry that, it's denatured. You cannot go backwards and put the amino acids in those shapes that they were when it was just egg white. Now they're denatured. Well, that's what happens to the enzymes in your brain. Little baby gets 104 temperature. They can recover from it. Human being gets 104, 105. The enzymes, proteins in your brain get denatured. They cook, essentially, and they won't go back to the way they were. It broke the tertiary structure of that enzyme that now they won't function. The active site has been denatured, they call it. Okay, essential amino acids. We finally, so long I can find here off the computer screen. We've got histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, and cysteine, phenylalanine, and tyrosine. Those are the two rings. Threonine, that's an alcohol, tryptophan, and valine. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look these up on our thing, and we're going to make them with a balloon. How's that sound? Huh? These are the essential amino acids there. Okay, we've got our essential amino acids. We're going to show the balloons here because we're going to make these on balloons. This is what Really not showing up very good. This is your terminal end. This is the end on the end. That's the Schroeder carbon. It's going to come down here for the side chain. Out here is the carboxylic carbon. 
show it very good, but there's two oxygens on the end of that. 